The investigations, accusations, and conspiracies, the criminal cases against the late superstar Michael Jackson made worldwide headlines. Now a 13-hour docu-series podcast reveals new information from those scandals. Joining us is Brandon Ogborn. He's the writer and producer of Telephone Stories, The Trials of Michael Jackson. He's joined by his co-host, Omar Crook. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good, Good morning. to have you. So, Brandon, uh, why did you guys decide to do this podcast, and what are the criminal cases that you're, you're looking at? Um, we decided to do it. I'm a playwright, and I wrote a play about Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. One of the characters in it was this guy, Burt Fields, who was a really high-powered entertainment lawyer. He came to the play to see it, which I saw him, and I puked in my mouth because I thought he was wow. going to sue me. But he ended <laughs> up befriending me, and okay. it turns out he repped Michael Jackson in the 90s when Jackson was doing that um, Dangerous World tour, and then he got accused by a 13-year-old boy that he ended up settling with for $20 million. So Bert was gracious enough to let me interview him, and from that, I started to interview all these other figures in it who were prosecutors who tried to put Jackson away, who were his attorneys, who were reporters mm -hmm. that covered the case, and it kind of just expanded, expanded, expanded. It was just going to be like a one-hour thing, and we yeah. were like, uh, we're going to keep going. Well, and, wow. and I think for, for both of us, we were both huge Michael Jackson fans. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really simple. I remember the day that I got the Thriller cassette. Yeah. It was like yesterday. So, cassette. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah right? Now, now you're, you're an opera singer, right? <laughs> That's right. And, Brandon, you're a playwright. Playwright and a, a waiter. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. <laughs> yeah. so, but, so does that come into play in some way in the way you guys present? the podcast? Uh, well, I mean, it gives Brandon an opportunity to call me a fancy type, if that's what you mean. Right. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, we have the same classes on. I think it can also come into play in that we're, we're talking as two regular people, as two friends kind of solving this mystery. So it's called Telephone Stories because it's, it's structured like the game of telephone to get back to the truth okay. from something you've heard so many times in right. different versions of but also because it takes, it's framed by these phone calls with me and Omar because it's such a complicated story. There's so many figures in it and so many legal motions that having it take place is just two guys on the phone going, wait, what happened next? Well, let's talk to Michael's attorney about this issue. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about the pro to the prosecutor about this issue. Mm -hmm. piece to, to piece together the cases so it's less about whether he did it or not, which a lot of people already have their mind made up, and it's more of how did this happen in mm -hmm. such a fascinating way. And in that, we also uncovered a lot of things that haven't been made public before. And we actually like each other a lot. Oh, so that's yeah. good. It, uh, it makes it entertaining to right. direct right. Does, does it change your, some people have said, the more you look into Michael Jackson, the less of a fan you become. Well, um, I've got two young kids. Mm -hmm. Brandon has an eight-month-old daughter. Um, and that certainly comes into play. A lot, a lot of my opinions changed uh, when I had kids. I'm sure you guys know. Uh, so I don't, I don't want to. Yeah, it was hard. It was a hard two and a half years. I'll be honest. It's uh, we uncovered a lot of things that I didn't like talking about. Um, I think they're important as far as the context of pop culture and and personally, just my own feelings about Michael Jackson. I've always been a huge fan and that's what drove me to continue with this project it's, it's very simple there's no big secret about that there's also people that you guys spoke to prosecution defense sides that never had spoken publicly about what they know about michael jackson how did you get them to open up about I it i think and a did lot of it was there was sorry I no that's okay go ahead uh, I think some of it, there was Carl Douglas, who um, was Johnny Cochran's protege mm -hmm. in the OJ trial, and he worked with Michael Jackson <clears throat> in the 93 case and told some pretty amazing stories of mm -hmm. like, what it, you know, that's what we liked about expanding it to this, is you can slow these moments down of Carl Douglas talking about what it was like to bring the $20 million settlement to Michael Jackson to sign in Las Vegas and how Jackson's attention span for things is pretty short. Mm -hmm. So we had to just be like, this is the money, this is gonna make this go away. We also talked to prosecutor Lauren Weiss, who was working for the LADA's office with Bill Hodgman under Gil Garcetti, and she's never spoken to anybody. I think the way that we got access to that is simply by not calling and being like, hey, I'm a serious reporter. It was more like, hey, I'm just this bozo. I'm a guy, I'm interviewing a bunch of people. I wanna tell the story from all sides. 
the prosecution and the defense and everybody in between. And I think that's how we got the trust of, of people to talk to us. Mm -hmm. And I think we really honored that with the show. Absolutely. We, it's expansive, but it gives people time to really share anecdotal and the emotional experience that they had either defending Michael Jackson or trying to protect Michael Jackson or trying to put him in jail. And it's also really fair. We, do, we go into both sides. We don't try and um, slander or lambast anybody. We don't make any big decisions on the show. We just uncover the, the, uh, you know, the documents and talk about them and let people decide. Um, you, you uncovered uh, a, an interview with Marlon Brando. Yeah, that was a pretty <laughs> miraculous <laughs> slash bizarre and hilarious um, interview that Marlon Brando gave to prosecutors in 1994. So it was following the Jordan Chandler, his name is now public, right. uh, the Jordan Chandler settlement. He met with um, prosecutors voluntarily and he gave a conversation with them under oath and he described a strange relationship that he had with Michael where Michael would give him dance lessons and Brando would give him um, acting lessons. Mm. And in the course of it, um, Brando began to ask Jackson questions about his family, about his friendships um, with children, and Michael broke down, according to Brando, and started crying and started sobbing and was inconsolable. And when Brando began to ask him about his relationships with young boys, he refused to answer him. Mm. Is that what I'm hearing, the, the rumor, and you said this is all like the game of telephone where you hear mm -hmm. things and then you talk to people to try to get to the bottom of it. There was the rumor that Michael Jackson had paid the first accuser um, who, who was... The that's not a rumor. That's okay. fact. Okay. That's, that's well-documented, well-known yeah. fact. Something that was rumor that we got to the truth of from his own attorneys admitting it was that there was a rumor that Jackson didn't pay that money himself, that it was an insurance company. Ah. And we found out that was just not true. The bulk right. of the money came from Michael Jackson. A very small amount, low six figures, mm -hmm. came from an insurance carrier. All right. Well, very interesting. For more information on Telephone Stories, the trials of Michael Jackson, you can go to telephonestories.org. And, and to listen to the podcast, you can download the Luminary app on your smartphone where you'll get a free one-month trial. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us.